and only mode. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Lisa Conley at Child Care Resources with the Glyso Play and Learn Program, and hoping you're hearing me here. Um, if you are, go ahead and just type something in the question form. We've got two of us on the call today. Myself and Paula. Um, hi, Lisa. Go ahead and type something in the question form. Hi, Lisa. Okay, good, good, good. So, Folks are hearing me. Okay, well, thank you all for joining us in this afternoon's webinar on the Early Learning Conversation, which is a, a program, a project that has been in development over the last several years uh, with some requests from community partner organizations as well as our neighbor caregiver. Glad that one of the developers of the Early Learning Conversations is here with us. Paula Steinberg, um, who is my coworker here at Healthcare Resources, she will be involved with um, representing the needs and the perspective of many community caregivers and all sorts of systems level work, as well as working directly with community partner organizations and even um, some parents and caregiver leaders to participate in the conversation. So, welcome, Paula, and I will. Okay, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm Paula. I'm sitting in the same room as Lisa, and Lisa's going to help me with some of the logistics here in terms of some polling and um, anything else I don't know how to do in terms of webinars because she's the expert. So this is really great to have um, an opportunity to talk about the early learning conversations. It's a program, as Lisa said, that has been developed in development for a while, um, and it's been through a couple of um, rounds of piloting, and now we're kind of ready to take it um, more broadly, which is why we're bringing it to you guys. So the conversations is a model that, as the screen says, um, is uh, brings information about healthy child development in different domains and school readiness in a format that combines um, dialogue led by um, parent leaders, natural leaders, caregiver leaders, and hands-on activities. And um, so what we're going to do here is take a look at the conversations, um, you know, some of the, um, the details, how it works, like it's a program, um, some of the whys and wherefores, and um, what some of the outcomes are, and how you could be involved should you choose. So um, I'm not a big fan of reading slides. You guys can read this yourselves. And Lisa is going to man the um, question box, right? So if you have any questions at any point in time, please just um, type them in and we will answer them. Is that right, Lisa? Yep, that's right. Okay. All right. Great. So. So, so it's really about um, peer education, peer education um, and dialogue and conversation circles. Um, All righty. So in the uh, peer education, uh-oh, oh, seriously, now it's not working. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm trying to advance a slide, and all of a sudden, of course, it worked a second ago. I was, what happened? I froze. Seriously? We'll take a real good read at this while we're <laughs> um, Are you the presenter? No, I'm still the presenter. Okay. Um, hang on, hang on, I just got something. Okay. Um, well, it's in my user drive under presentations and then KPL network. Should I close it out? Well, I can't do anything. Alrighty. Well, while you guys are waiting, I will say that um, uh, we chose a peer education model. Um, because it is uh, very culturally competent, it's also low cost, and it um, tends to reach, ah, oh no, I thought it came up, but it didn't. It, um, it's really effective at reaching some of the hardest to reach communities. And in terms of your work um, with Kaleidoscope, I'm thinking that you may have seen some um, 
kaleidoscope participants who are likely, you know, uh, parent leaders. There's always those couple of people who are, you know, group leaders. People come to them, and they know a lot of folks in the community, and that's the the natural leader. I mean, we, you know, I tend to say parent leader because um, it's a little clearer, but we certainly um, include grandparents. Um, in this, and anybody, even somebody who's not a parent or a parent of an older child, it's really anybody who's got that drive to bring this information um, to their community. How you doing over there, Lisa? Okay. Okay, I'm sorry, you guys. Talk among yourselves. <laughs> um, oh, sure, sure. Okay, so let me let me. We have a poll, and we'll jump to that while we're figuring this out. So, um, the uh, <clears throat> pardon me. The conversations were, as Lisa said, developed in response to what we were hearing as we developed Kaleidoscope Partners um, in King County, and we kept hearing that um, even though there's this, this like avalanche of information about parenting and school readiness out in the community that families still felt that they didn't have access because they didn't, it was maybe, it was, um, you know, not in the right language, it was in a too high of a literacy level, and they also just, there's too much, they didn't know what to trust, and then it's all theoretical, or not all of it, but a lot of it, and so people didn't know what, um, could they apply to their own child or children, you know, in the moment, in the kitchen. Um, so we did some focus groups, and we um, thought that we would ask the same questions of you that we asked of the focus groups, and we could see um, how the answers compare. So did you launch the poll, Lisa? Great. And our focus groups were, um, I don't know if any of you worked with directly with Angelica Cardenas when she was here. She did the focus groups in partnership with some of our community organizations here, um, including SOAR and um, Chinese Information and Service Center. We talked with English, Spanish, and Chinese speakers. We talked with parents, grandparents, and teen parents, and we learned a lot. And I'm not going to say the responses, so Lisa, you tell me when... Um, when we're ready to do the next thing. So people are still voting, it looks like, and it sounds okay, like, great. Um, but we got, ooh, all the votes are coming in, let's see. So, <laughs> <laughs> did I win, did I win? <laughs> I so, so far we have, you know, you, you have the choice of, of selecting any or all of those choices there. And it looks like most everybody is getting, um, is choosing all of those. Definitely 100% on ways <laughs> to discipline and guide your child, 100%, 100% say yes about activities that help your child develop and learn, 86% now what to expect of children of, <clears throat> excuse me, different ages, and 71% for how to keep your child physically safe and how to comfort your child and help him be happy. So Neat. there we go. And um, I am going to try something here and see if this will work. It looks like the the slideshow is on my computer. You stole it. Yeah, so I'm going to see if I can steal the screen from Paula and you guys can hear her and she'll tell me when to click the buttons. Did you want to go to the second, to the next poll or should I talk about... Um Sure, we can do that. Okay. So, because okay. in the focus groups, we asked everybody all together. Um, okay. okay, you're, you're the, the presenter person. now, as far as my screen says, Lisa. Okay. So, we will go ahead and close that poll. Okay. Sorry. Thank you all for your um, patience. patience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to think and think. push buttons yeah. and talk at the same time here. So and so with the um, the results that just came in from the first poll, um, I think discipline was probably the number one um, 
and I would say safety was the second that came in from the focus groups and um, activities, activities, you know, kind of the keeping the child busy. Um, activities, oh look, activities is, is 100% now. Yeah, that's fun. Neat. So, okay. And so what that did was it guided us to, I mean, we had our own agenda, right, about what we thought families should know, but then this guided us um, in some more um, detailed fashion, like to where to put some emphasis um, in terms of the topics, but also in terms of the um, approach, how we wrote things. Do you, are you doing the next? Yeah, sure, I can do that. Just tell me when to move slides and... Oh, you can... Uh, uh, Oh, we're back to peer education. <laughs> I'm discombobulated. So this is the peer education, which is it's just a nice definition of peer education. And then go ahead and go to the next slide, I think. Um, and the next slide is about what the benefits of peer education are. And um, I just thought these were really great because they're very, very strength-based and they really get in, you know, to what we're trying to do, I think. They're really well aligned with, like, our overall goals for Kaleidoscope Play and Learn and for, you know, family, friend, and neighbor and family engagement and parent support for all of it. Um, so, um, if, you know, there's the knowledge, there's learning through role modeling, but there's also the um, cultural competence and the, uh, it's just, it, um, takes, it breaks down barriers. It's less scary, more acceptable. I like that word, acceptable. And it also provides ongoing personal development and leadership. Um, and we've, I'll tell you a couple stories later on where we've really seen this happen with um, parent leaders and even former um, Kaleidoscope participants. So go ahead and do that next poll. Okay. Is it already up? No, I'm going to do that right now. Okay. Okay. So think about a family member. Um, Think about the family member you had in mind who would be caring for your child and um, think about the, the, the way that they might want to learn more about taking care of children. And you get one choice here. How, what would be their preferred Ooh, method one choice. <laughs> of, of learning more about child development and taking care of children? And as you're voting, I can say that then once we did the focus groups, and then of course we just had heard from community partners, we also assembled a multicultural advisory group that took a look throughout the process at what we were writing, um, at when we piloted, um, they you know, sort of helped us digest the results and the changes that we made, um, and then of course they um, helped us uh, set up the focus groups and learned with us from the focus group um, responses. Okay, let's see. Got about half the people voting in here. Go ahead and close it. It's much harder to pick one. one. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so we'll close it in just a few seconds here. Tick, tick. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Yeah, do you have that? You should have that on the. <laughs> So, okay, how about we'll go ahead and close it and see what we've got so far. And there I Oh, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> okay, that's what the focus group people said. <laughs> so, it was wonderful because, um, it, you know, and we didn't even give them prompts, right? We just said how. How? Who do you trust to get? Uh, really important information like this information about raising your kids and so this gave us some confidence that the peer education and the dialogue was going to be um, at, at least you know partially an effective approach so thank you thank you very much although actually you guys should give yourselves a little more credit on the kaleidoscope there because kaleidoscope's good it came in third at least that's all right that's all right it's all right well okay so now I, we wanted to take a look at the conversations and you don't have them on your computer i have them on mine yes so tell so me so they're on the d drive okay under ffm and then conversations 
So See, now you all, all will get to know where all our secrets live. Yeah, this is, yes, really, this is a CCRD drive. That's kind of scary. <laughs> Let's just show that. Okay, and then um, do the final English PDF parent format, third from the top. Okay. All right, so let's first just go to the cover page. And so this, and I, when I went to view, it worked. That, the one you showed me how to do. Okay. And then I also had to smallify it up at the top. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, we'll do what we've got here. So. Okay. We'll just, small, just smallify up there. We're the, um, at the top where it says 105. You can just hit the, okay. hit the minus sign. Anyway, um, so this is the beautiful cover. And we love the cover because we actually had, um, let's see, there was um, Angelica and... Who was it? It was Kari. Was Kari still here? Some of our co-workers and Lisa's daughter, uh, Jen, um, who drew the pictures to illustrate the conversations. And so we, uh, we like it. But the, if you see a binder with this on the front, this is the um, early learning. And, oh, and then the title, I don't know if any of you remember, there was the booklet that we, um, it was kind of the original CCR document that was developed to support family, friend, and neighbor caregivers, and it was called Taking Care of Our Children. So our advisory group wanted to link them together, which we thought was a lovely idea, taking care of our children, conversations with communities, but it's way too long. So we now refer to these as early learning conversations, plus the word community, even though it's quite accurate, there's like these things called community conversations out there, so people were getting confused. So it's one of these things where it, it says that and we call it early learning conversations. Okay, Lisa, so let's go to the uh, table of contents, which is, it's number three. Oh, number three. Contents list. Yes. Okay. And this is just to show you what um, it's the the full contents, and um, so you'll see. And we definitely tried to you know put a lot of this information into you know everyday layperson language. So um, the first, the very first one introduces the concept of child development. And then there's brain development, social and emotional, going down, you know, the list. Um, cognitive, physical, and then early literacy, early numeracy, school readiness, temperament. Now we can go to the next page. And then um, screen time is self-evident. Um, and then there's several on health, which I probably wouldn't have included, but we were working when we... Um, no, that was something else. I don't. I think it was because of the focus group um, responses. There was a thing when you're leaving your child with someone else. You know, health and safety is a big component of that. So health and safety, obviously discipline, um, and then self care and living in a multicultural community. Now we have um, translated these into several different languages. Right now they are in Spanish. Um, Let's see, uh, Chinese, Vietnamese, Korean, Tagalog, and uh, there's a, we have a partial translation in Somali. Um, so that to say that when we, if we want to add a new topic, it's kind of a big deal because we need to add it and then we have to translate it and format it. And I, and I have a, a list of topics that the parent leaders and their conversations participants have expressed interest in. So if you were to do this, that would be one area in which you would really be benefiting us is to like, okay, there's a need for this knowledge in the community, um, which is great. It's just great to know and eventually we'll be able to, um, to add more, um, more topics. Okay, Lisa, so now we're going to go to the, we're going to take a look at an actual conversation. And we're um, going to number 10. And then we'll do 11 and 12 right after that. So this is the format. So each um, topic has, it starts out like this. There's a, the title, and then it starts out with, did you know how a child, in this case, develops social and emotional skills? And so this is like our way of, okay, the title says feelings, and then social and emotional skills is down there. So we're kind of trying to... Um, you know, 
subtly or not subtly get a point across that social and emotional skills and feelings are connected. And then there are, you know, and this was the hard part, we distilled down from research and we did a lot, um, took a lot from zero to three, but then from a host of other research-based um, resources as well. So we've got some key points there. And this was what people said when they were asked about facilitating is, you know, we wanted to give people some um, facts to uh, hold on to, right? Because, you know, you're asked to lead a conversation in the community on an area in which you are not an expert. Um, so we wanted to give people basic facts. And then at the bottom, there's that little um, box there at the bottom, and we wanted, there's, there's sort of two different boxes. You'll see a different one. Well, you might not. Depends on what we look at today. But we wanted, this is like the most important message. We just kept on, um, we repeated that throughout, thinking that, you know, you could have a parent come just to one conversation. It certainly could happen. And we wanted to emphasize the um, message about nurturing relationships, about the impact of all the relationships. And then, of course, um, you know, the little um, nod to early intervention around if you have questions or concerns, ask. And so that's the fact page, and then on the, um, the next page um, is about what you can do at home. And this is the part I'm really proud of, and this is the, what, where the families get really, really excited. So um, it's what you can do to help a child learn about feelings and relationships. So again, a lot of the parenting material we have heard anyway is it's very one directional, right? Do this, do that, know this. But, um, you know, with the conversations, this is what your role is, what you can do. And so um, that's each um, topic has this list of what you can do. And, and people have the greatest conversations about this. And, of course, you know, one thing that happens is, um, as, as happens in Play and Learn, people get excited because they're like, oh, I'm already doing that. So I'm really helping my child learn about feelings and relationships. Um, and then at the very bottom, there is a box, or not a box, a paragraph, something, um, that connects the topic to school readiness, or you know, ready, being ready to succeed in school was what we finally landed on, because I find that many, many, many families don't connect some of these topics to school success, especially if they have very young children. Um, so that's um, in every single topic has that. So it's interesting because there's like poison prevention. Well, if your child is poisoned, then they can't go to kindergarten. I mean, <laughs> but, but, um, you know, physical development, uh, early brain development, some of the topics that, you know, parents don't automatically connect to being ready to succeed in school. So that's the basic format. Um, and then, okay, let's go to the next one. And then about, I don't know, maybe half, maybe more than half of the conversations have an activity that goes with them. Um, we found, and, and that's something I really want to do um, more with, but, you know, in addition to, um, and, and paired with the conversation and the dialogue, did you lose the... Um, so you need the... Yeah, I need the next, um, I think it was number 11. Okay. The next... Another file. Okay. Okay. There we go. Thanks. Um, people, you know, this is adult education theory, right? People like activities. They want to learn through doing something. And so we have provided a lot of different resources and um, activities. And then, again, the facilitator, you know, when they get excited about this and, you know, they can do many more things. This is a really nice one because it's very simple and it's very accessible. So what the activity section is, is it for the conversation leader, the parent leader, this tells people exactly how to, you know, how to share this with the community. We have found, and I hadn't thought about this at the beginning, but many of the parent leaders have said it's easiest to start a conversation group with an activity which makes perfect sense rather than just, okay, we're sitting around a table and everybody's drinking tea and it's like, okay, today we're going to talk about um, brain development. But it's much easier to just bring something out and 
uh, show people and then they have a response and the conversation starts to flow. So you can go all the way down. Lisa says there's what you will need, there's what you do, and then how, um, you know, how to use this particular activity with a child at home. And then if you want to, then you can go to the very next PDF, and that's the last one in the feelings topic. Um, this is perfect. There's the feelings chart. We actually got, I'm sure most of you have seen this, we got permission to um, translate this into several different languages. And so this is something that, you know, the, um, this, the conversation leaders have. They hand it out to the families, um, you know, that you can, uh, if you've got a laminator, you can laminate it and, you know, put it up on the refrigerator. Um, I think go to the very next page. They can actually make a game out of it where, you know, you make a little, uh, you know, you do a, a, a arrow out of cardboard and a brad and you can spin the, spin the wheel and then tell a story about when you were feeling scared or make a face that shows that you're scared. Um, it, you know, it's just a lot of fun. And then I think and then the three and four, I think it's just, oh, right, the relaxation thermometer. And you'll see that I've seen this in kindergarten classrooms and probably preschool classrooms too. Are you blue or are you red? And then the very last one is again the little faces, but they're um, in a different format so that you can cut them out and make cards out of them. So huge um, array of different activities that you could do, um, and that's you know that is a conversation there in a nutshell. So what happens is, because I've been to some of these, and you know, you may just start talking about feelings, and then the conversation is going to veer over to discipline, and it's going to go to child development, and then everybody's going to tell their birth story. I mean, you know, the conversation goes all over the place. Everybody has a ton of stories, and that is perfectly fine with the role of the the leader, the parent leader, is to make sure that some of the key points are. It, you know, reached during the conversation and to, um, you know, kind of uh, draw everybody's attention back to the one or two topic. Quite often, a uh, parent leader will choose to do a couple of topics that closely relate to each other in the same conversation. And then I forgot to put this on a slide, but um, and we have a couple of questions that we give them that they can, they can ask um, at the end of the conversation. One is, um, what did you learn today that um, you might share with another parent or caregiver? And then the second one is, what did you learn that you're going to, you know, that you might try out with a child at home, with your child or the one you're caring for? The third question is, um, uh, what did you learn related to this topic that we discussed and school readiness? And so that if you ask those questions or the parent leader, excuse me, asks those questions near the end of the conversation, it helps to like refocus the group and bring them back. So that's what the conversations look like. Um, we will have time to take a look at another one, um, I think, uh, later on um, during this session. So now I wanted to talk about how it works, like what the nuts and bolts are. How does this you know, take place in the community. And um, it's the identifying the natural leaders, as we said, from Kaleidoscope, or maybe there's um, other programs, maybe you know volunteers in um, the uh, in the community, like there's been um, some other parent leadership programs from a Taurus. There's been um, people who have used these so far. Um, let's see, a preschool teacher was using them. A PTA president wants to use them now with her, um, some of her group, her, her PTA members. Um, some healthcare promoters were using them. Some home visitors are interested. So um, just, you know, networking within your own networks um, to find these parent and caregiver leaders. And then introducing the program. And it's so interesting. I've had this conversation now with several parents. And um, it's deceptively simple. So, I mean, it's just like, yeah, do you want to just like lead some conversations? And, you know, people 
It's like, really? Do you want me to do that? And you know, you have that kind of conversation um, where what does it take? And people tend to, I'm finding people tend to want to turn it into more of a program. And it's like, no, it's really just a conversation. You can have it in a coffee shop um, or in somebody's living room. And then, of course, our hope is that people who are participating in the conversations themselves, some of them will go on to lead, you know, to in, um, bring others sort of into the fold so that they can become parent leaders and they can lead more conversations and you can have that um, ripple effect out into the community. So I have found that it works best if you can have a cohort, and that doesn't need to be a huge cohort, it could be two people, but you know, people like to learn together and they like to support each other. So I have not yet worked with just one person. I think, I mean, there might be some individual that would um, reach success that way, but so far we're doing this with a cohort. And then you conduct training sessions, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, and then, um, after, uh, or maybe in the midst of the training sessions, then you support the parent leaders to implement the conversations. And that's, you know, depends on your budget and your parent leader and your organization and your community. Um, you certainly can help folks with outreach. It's really interesting. I have found some parent leaders really um, want stipends. This was especially the leaders who had been chromatorists before and were used to getting, like, some pretty hefty stipends. Um, definitely there were folks who were interested in child care um, and then those that weren't who were really comfortable leading the conversations in somebody's home for you know an hour where they didn't it was fine to have the kids you know crawling around the house um, food is something that everybody really does like um, and then take home materials um, some of the paper materials we can provide we can help people you know support them with printing um, but there has been an ask for more hands-on materials and you know that's on my list of things that I should do and um, and then having a learning community, supporting um, the parent leaders and coming back together and saying, you know, how was that for you? Was it crazy? Was it scary? Did it work well? Because people, I have found people get really, really excited about their role and about, oh, you know, everybody really had a lot to say. It wasn't hard at all and, you know, the community is excited about this. And so, anyway, that's, that's the nuts and bolts. Um, it's not that... Um, not that complicated. Um, so far, I'm the only person who's been training folks just in King County. I'm going up. I was invited to go up to um, Northwest and do uh, training for uh, this uh, Mother Mentors program on Whidbey Island. And so then I might be doing a train the trainer up there. Um, so I don't have a train the trainer yet because we're still getting this off the ground. But um, certainly that could be developed relatively quickly if any of you were interested in adding this to your toolkit. Um, let's see. Okay, the training modules. We can go to the next slide, Lisa. So this is what the um, content is of the different of the modules, and I'm, I'm actually I didn't do modules at the beginning, um, but I've now I because I've learned a bit from working with different parent groups, I'm modulizing because the you know different parents and caregivers come with very different experiences in education and so yeah, sometimes I've got folks who are you know English language learners and they really want a, a lot more um, uh, contact around the, the early learning topics and then I had somebody who is a preschool teacher um, she's running her own preschool she used to be a play and learn facilitator and before that she was a play and learn participant and but she's done some early learning research um, I mean um, education so she wanted more information about you know the facilitation component and the community resources so this way if it's modulized you can put your training together really to respond to what the um, your your parent leaders need and request and they allow us all to um, you know to make adjustments I've also found that um, what seems to work best is if people get a little bit of training or a lot depending on what they want but then they go out 
and do a couple conversations. So that's the hardest part is doing that first one. It's like, ooh, I don't, I'm not sure I can do it. You know, so like do the first one with your family <laughs> or your friends, even if they don't have kids, do a dry run. Then do another one that where it's actually a conversation with a couple folks that maybe you haven't done this with before. And then they come back and then really dig in. Okay, this is what I need to learn more of. And then you can just, um, you know, really um, offer them a lot of group practice time. Um, the other thing is that we've, you know, the trainings, they're really fun. And, you know, it's important to make them highly interactive. And even though there's a structure to them, ha have them have an informal um, feel. And so the next slide shows just how we present information um, about, for example, the early learning system. Um, because, you know, they're working within the early learning system. People are going to ask questions. You can spend a whole day just on this, right? And at times we have, because sometimes people want to know more about, you know, one of these components. But it's also kind of fun, and you print it out in color, and people like how it looks. And so, um, you know, it's not, uh, it's a very interactive and very hands-on training. So now, okay, I, let me pause. I'm talking for a half an hour straight. So are there any questions at this point? Yes, so if you have a question, go ahead and type it in the question box, and I'll, I'll keep track of those and let Paula know. Questions, comments? Do you like the flower? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who likes the frog? <laughs> we should have a poll. Lisa likes the frog. I like the frog. Yes. The frog. Yes. Yes. I like the frog too. It was unexpected. <laughs> <laughs> okay, are you seeing any questions? No Lisa? questions coming up. But Alrighty, so keep typing can... away and I'll I'll jump in then. Alrighty, and then we can you can go to the next slide, which is a question also. So um I didn't time that my question asking very well because the next slide is this question. So yes, and I guess Paula would like you to go ahead and in response to the question, what do you, what do you think children and families need in order to thrive? Just go ahead and type what how you would answer that question or how what you think children need to thrive. Okay, we're getting some responses now. So Monica um, in Yakima says a strong foundation. Anybody else? Jordan, also in Yakima or Wenatchee? Um, it says accessible community resources. Masa in Ferndale, loving, nurturing environment with rich experiences. And Masa says, and people. <laughs> <laughs> True. Agreed. <laughs> Anybody else? See, Sue, um, somewhere here in King County, she says, lots of love and attention. Do things oh. with them. Nancy, also in King County here, food and a safe environment. Okay, Lisa? Yeah. Right. Yeah, if you're still typing, go ahead and finish it up, and that's fine. We'll, I'll, I'll yeah. shout it out. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Paula. We can go to the next slide. Okay. So this is actually an activity that I do during the, the training for the parent leaders is ask this question and I give everybody stickies and I ask them to write each component, each thing that they think children and families need on one sticky. And then we write the protective factors up, the five protective factors, one on each chart, and then we invite people to place the stickies up there. And it's really neat because, um, you know, love, every, almost everybody always writes love and relationships. But you can put love and relationships in a number of these different places. And um, this is an introduction to the protective factors framework, which is another component of the parent leader training, and which is something that we um, based the conversations model and content on. Um, and I'm a big fan of the protective factors framework. It's very strength-based, 
and um, it includes the importance of social connections for the adults in a child's life, which is something that you know we do with Kaleidoscope and we also do with the early learning conversations. Um, and the wonderful thing is that when all five protective factors are present, it is actually predictive of optimal child development. Predictive, which is amazing to me. Um, and it also reduces the risk of child abuse and neglect. Um, and I can, you know, I'm sure many of you have heard about this, but the website for the Center for the Study of Social Policy is down there. Um, all righty, so then uh, let's go to the next slide. And I um, just wanted to be, you know, we're all outcomes, we're living in a world of outcomes, and so <laughs> these are our intended outcomes for the parents, the adults, the participants, parents, and caregivers, and for the children. And I've been having a lot of conversations with school district folks lately and um, around family engagement and I'm realizing that really it, the entire family is who we need to experience successful transition into the K-12 system. Um, if a child hasn't been in preschool, it's a big change, but even if they have been in preschool or child care and it's been, you know, kind of warm and fuzzy and then they walk into kindergarten, that it can be a very, very different experience. And so um, when a child, when a parent has had this experience of developing your knowledge about child development and developing a social network um, and getting involved in their child's education and understanding the early learning system and school readiness, they feel better prepared to negotiate that system. And of course, they know you and or are connected to you and um, to their parent leader and who may even be connected to the school system. So it just sets things up. Um, for success for the the entire family. Um, let's see. Yes, let's go to the next slide. There are also community outcomes that we're seeing. And now this is, I wanted to tell a story. This is, we have a, a wonderful, wonderful parent leader. Um, her name is Partoon. She's a Somali immigrant and she is working in the White Center area with one of our community partner organizations, um, the White Center Community Development Association. So Fartune is a trained kaleidoscope facilitator and she's trained in the early learning conversations. And she's really implementing these things side by side. I think um, Play and Learn, as you've probably all experienced, is um, a really great outreach mechanism. It's so much fun and people love to come. It's a little easier to hook people <laughs> into the the kaleidoscope model than to the let's talk about early learning. But um, we're finding that when the um, families come to play and learn, first of all, they don't want to leave. And secondly, many families get really excited about learning about child development and school readiness and they want to go deeper. And so that's um, why we're doing the two programs. They actually call it early learning connectors, these programs together. And then there's some other components as well. So Fortune was um, uh, talking to families in her community to invite um, people to attend Play and Learn and she um, met a mom, a single mom with a young child who was um, really struggling. She was just very isolated, a recent um, immigrant. Her family was spread all over the, uh, the world really and so she didn't have a lot of immediate support. She felt very isolated and she stayed at home because she was not comfortable with her child's behavior. She was, you know, didn't, thought she would act out. She was embarrassed and then also thought she might, you know, run away or, you know, and so get hurt or be in some kind of danger. And so um, Fartoon, the parent leader, um, talked with her about the brain development um, topic and we have that a picture of a brain scan in there and parents really, really like talking about brain development and then she, um, you know, invited them on and she also asked this parent what their daily routine was like, which was just a brilliant question. She was just like, well, what do you guys do at home? You know, what's, what's your day like? And it turned out that uh, they were, um, the mom was on the phone most of the day talking with her, you know, 
spread out family, which was her, you know, primary source of emotional support. And the child was watching TV all day long and in the house or in the apartment. So, you know, it's understandable that they weren't the happiest campers and um, that the child had some behavioral issues. And the mom was just feeling like she wasn't having a good time parenting. Anyway, they went to a kaleidoscope group in the neighborhood and got really happy. You know, <laughs> and the mom, I think a lot of her concerns were alleviated because she saw her child interacting with other kids, with other adults. She saw the way other children were behaving, the way other parents were interacting with their, or other moms, I should say, were interacting with their children, moms and grandmas and aunties. And um, then after that, Fortune um, visited her again, I believe, or actually it might have been with the entire Play and Learn group. They stayed and they did um, another conversation on screen time, on the impact of watching television and on you know, video games on a child's development. And this mom said, you know, I have not been parenting the way I should, and she turned off her cable. This was my favorite success story of last year. We actually nominated Fartoon for an Unsung Heroes Award. That's, you've probably seen that email that came out of Strengthening Families from the Department of Early Learning, because this is going to have a profound effect. Well, it really already has on their relationship, the mom and the daughter, and um, on the daughter's development. And then Fortune has been doing this now for um, a while, over a year, and she says she is starting to hear in her community other people talking to each other about these points of child development and nurturing interactions and school readiness. And so that's where we come to this community-based outcome. Um, and it, it grows out of the, you know, obviously out of the, you know, increased knowledge and skills, but also out of the social networks. Um, okay, Lisa, we can go to the next slide. Um, I just wanted to, um, this is probably not news to anybody, but it's, you know, the, some of the desired six uh, uh, characteristics for success. There were a couple of parent leaders that I'd worked with that really found this overwhelming. Um, and it was kind of, they kind of put it on themselves, like they were like, okay, we've got to do these all, you know, in a month, and then turn in all this paperwork, which wasn't true, but they thought they did. And so part of that was on me because um, there were, I'm not bilingual, unfortunately, and so some of the requirements, which are minimal um, in terms of documentation, kind of got lost in translation. Um, but uh, mostly it's that willingness to kind of learn in public and, um, and willingness to just learn, period, learn together, help other people learn. Um, and we can go to the next slide. This is just one example of um, how we frame these different components of things. And community outreach can really seem daunting, depending on how you um, frame it. Like people often use the word recruiting, which is a military word. And uh, you know, really, we're just talking about what are your networks? What are the networks that you know your friends have? Who do you know? Um, and then this message about early learning, you know, early learning and school readiness is not a hot topic for some folks, right, or child development. So it's like, what is the, you know, how do you want to say this in, that is going to make sense to your community? And that it's perfectly fine to say, I don't know. You are, not, you are sharing this information. You are not an expert. I mean, I have to go look stuff up all the time, personally. And so I usually share that with the, um, with the other parent leaders. It's like, it's okay to you know write down the question, look it up, ask a question, and come back. And then storytelling. This is where people get really excited, and they they develop their relationships through telling stories, and they learn through telling their story and connecting it to the facts that are presented in the conversations. Um, okay, we can go to the next slide, which I think might be the last one. And these are some of the community partners who have funded this, who helped us develop, you know, and, and pilot, and then who are actually implementing the conversations. And so your logo, too, could be on this slide. Um, <laughs> should you choose to, um, uh, to engage? Um, 
yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So if there is interest, we could look at uh, another conversation because we've got plenty of time. Um, I was gonna uh, the screen time was the was the one I was gonna look um, show people. Okay. So do you want to ask people if they're interested? Or sure. Just make them make them watch. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, any questions from folks? Yes. Questions Thank or you. comments or feedback? Um, go ahead and type them in the question box and. Maybe we'll just go ahead if, if it's all right with you, Paula. We sure. can take a look at the screen time one. Do you want sure, to and you know, you, it's in that same, um, I'll, if you, when you get to the screen, I'll tell you what number it is. Okay. Oh, I can't see that. There we go. Uh, number, it's moving. Kind of. 22. 22. 22, and then there's all the related next ones. Okay. So, right. So this is the screen time. People really, really like this topic because... I mean, if any of you are parents, you know how pervasive the screens are. And oh, and there was that one picture, Lisa. I forgot. You could, oh, yeah. back on the PowerPoint. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a picture for you all. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually a really great way of introducing the topic. I mean, have some fun with this, right? I mean, there's a lot of good stuff out there. Um, and. This, you know, people are, these small people that we own are just, they are um, attracted to the screen. So, okay, now we can go back to the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> so then again, this is, you know, um, this uh, American Academy of Pediatrics recommendation um, astonishes people. So there's also there's always a lot of really good conversation around that, and then of course how children learn. And there's been more and more information just coming out of iLabs, the Institute for Learning and Brain Science. Um, and then there's, um, oh, this is ironic, but there are some videos about how children learn, <laughs> not through videos. So anyway. <laughs> But uh, so there's you know a lot of information here, um, and you'll notice this one doesn't have the little square at the bottom because we just I couldn't fit in all the things I wanted to fit in with with the same little square. And then here's what you can do in this concept of controlling screen time. You are in control, um, even though it doesn't always feel like it. So um, and of course the you know the the audience here is. Um, adults caring for children zero to five, so it's really focused on the youngest child. And then there's a clear link um, to limiting screen time and brain development and success in school. So you can go to the activity, Lisa, or actually, you know what, don't go to the activity, just let's go to the skip one. You can go to the, um, yeah, the cartoons. So the activity file just shows people, um, the parent leader, how to use this. And then there's this, you can present this to people, like the, just the half of it, just the cartoons. And um, we've also got the, um, the rating guide on a sheet that you can see in a minute. And you can like give people a little test, right? Like which TV shows are, you know, which cartoons are rated. Um, which rating or for what age of child and a lot of parents are not aware of what um, you know some of the content that some cartoons are really have adult content you can go on to the next one the next page I mean yeah like uh, that one and like this one and I mean there's South Park and um, a lot of parents just really don't know um, especially English language learners. So um, parents just absolutely love digging into this. Um, and um, it, it's, all this information, again, goes to self-efficacy. The more you know, the stronger you feel in your role, um, in this case, as a parent or a caregiver. And then we have all the, and translated, we've got all the, um, usual, we've got the TV rating chart, the movie rating chart, and the video game rating chart that is also available um, in a variety of different languages. And it's just, it's golden information. So um, that is that. That is the end. That's all I have to say. Are there, were there any questions? Did any questions? Yeah, a question. And, and again, feel free to type any questions or comments. Um, and 
from Nancy at Matt Griffin Y in uh, King County here. Can you only have access to these conversations if you're trained to facilitate them? So how can people be involved? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I don't, I don't. I don't think I know. <laughs> I mean, we're in King County. I'm actually going to be at Matt Griffin tomorrow morning at nine o'clock. Um, so it would be easy for me to do this. Um, we have given out some of the conversations to, um, like, parent educators. Just not the whole binder, but the fact sheets. So I think that that would be. Um, accessible to you. So we should talk about that. Yeah, that's great. And if an organization wanted to get involved or bring oh, yeah, the just, conversations to their community, contact Paula, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, me. Or, you know, or Lisa me. first and then me. Yeah, either yeah, you'll know Lisa. But <laughs> she knows where to find me all the time. <laughs> yes. Yes. And this, these have been used, I don't think I said this, they've been used in um, to support family literacy programs, um, within home visiting, um, let's see what else, within, um, oh shoot, some other places. Those are the two that I, <laughs> uh, let me look and see where my notes are. I just lost my... Uh, No, I guess, yeah, family literacy. Oh, and um, obviously parenting education, yeah. So, um, you know, as a standalone as well, and then also they can be used to supplement um, existing programs. So that's, I guess that's probably a yes, Nancy, a long roundabout yes. Okay. Any other questions, folks? Comments? Anybody interested in learning more or considering using the early learning conversations in your work? Not seeing much of any action out there. Oh, Nancy says, thanks, Lisa and Paula. Yes, I'm interested. Please send more information. So, you, even if you're not ready to make a commitment today, you know where to find us, too. If you want to learn more, <laughs> we're here um, and available. And Yeah, and, you know, let this, um, just carry this around in the back of your mind, and uh, you may run into a situation where this would be the, the, the perfect tool. So, yeah, just know it's available. Great. So, uh, any other thoughts, Paula? No, just thank you for your time and thank you for supporting Play and Learn. Yeah, well, thank all the families. Yes, and thank you, Paula, too. Thanks so much for putting this together and um, doing a presentation. I know we've had some interest from different facilitators as we go around and um, do trainings with Kaleidoscope Play and Learn and trying to think of Great. ways to extend extend what happens in Play and Learn um, and doing more, more education, more support of family, friend, and neighbor caregivers and parents in the various communities. So, so thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for My participating. Pleasure. And for those of you on the West Coast here, stay warm and dry, and I hope your electricity um, holds out oh, during yeah. the coming windstorms. Don't go away. <laughs> <laughs> and those of, uh, those of you on the eastern side of the mountains and even around the east coast, hope you stay also warm and safe and, and enjoy your holidays, too. So thanks so much, and um, we'll, we'll be talking to each other yeah, soon. Next year. Yes. <laughs> See you next year. <laughs> right. Bye. Thanks so much.